just misses. Like the way an otter does when they're trying to eat an urchin. She was holding both, it was so stinking cute, but missed it. Hey Turbs, you want outside? Of course he does, he always wants outside. You had a fun day at the dog park. My day at the dog park, I mean about 15 minutes. That's all it took and then he was done. He crawled underneath the bench and he was like, can we go home now? I'm exhausted. He made a dog friend that he couldn't keep up with. That doesn't happen very often. And it's, oh yeah, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, beautiful day, 78, 80 degrees, supposed to be even warmer tomorrow. And then the like, tornadoes are supposed to start rolling through here tomorrow night. So that'll be fun. Severe storm risk from Arkansas and up and it's just that time of year. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to torture you. You can actually go outside. There you go. You gonna go? Just gonna turn around and see if I'm coming with you. That's what I thought. Just gonna have to wait a minute. As per usual with the weekend vlogs, nothing specific planned out, just going with the flow. And what the flow <laughs> is telling me right now, Colby, you are right in the light. How is that not blinding? He's a tortoise, he's always gonna find the light and lay underneath it. He has UV lights and heat lamps to lay underneath, but he likes to get where the sun hits the ground. Going off the forecast, pardon the background noise, the heater's on over there though I don't think it needs to be. Oh, that's not the heater, that's the circulation fan. Whatever, it's noisy. Coldest temperatures I'm seeing forecasted for the next like two weeks, 36 degrees. Now that's right on the edge of being too cold for the majority of what's out here, except for a few things. And I was thinking it might be nice to get some of these moved out. Even if it's just temporarily, I don't want to take too much out because you have to pull it back in. But I have all these end sets over here that I think would be much happier outside. As you can see, they're doing their thing. They want to grow, but they're getting long stretch out growth because I don't have a grow light dedicated to them. If it's warm, you really need that. Otherwise, these are much better to overwinter in a cool basement or something like that. I think they'd be better off out on the patio. Maybe the thematophyllum, the bipinatophyllum philodendron, perhaps they can take a good amount of cold it's not doing anything over here, it's just been sitting here all winter. It would probably enjoy some fresh air. These can drop down pretty chilly. I've had them take, ooh, I wanted to say hard frost, but probably not hard frost, like 30 degrees, 28 to 30 in there. So potentially a hard frost, lost the foliage, but they come back. So I'm not too concerned about the cold being a problem with this one. It's probably it, just the bananas and this one over here. Get those moved out play around the garden a little bit. Oh, and a buttload of new tropicals are here. So be having a look at those too, probably in the morning. I'm gonna get these plants moved outside and then cut back in. Y'all don't even care. You're not gonna be able to tell the difference between now and when I cut back to morning. I feel bad, like I'm being deceptive or something if I don't clarify that it's the next day and I'm not doing everything all at one time. Nobody cares though, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This has me happy just having plants outside. Can you see why? Yeah, need some color back out here. Need to get these cleaned up. I'm also realizing I gotta clean up this fountain too. Look at, this is, that's gotten pretty gross. It's not even on right now and it's kind of late. I'm gonna go work out after this. I'm gonna get pretty gross already doing what I've been doing and then that's gonna be disgusting. Then I'll work out just planting things around the shower. I'm taking a shower in like two hours, so may as well just get even more disgusting by cleaning up the fountain. Overthinking everything. So you can see here, particularly on these two, why it's, I think important to get them outside. See how that's grown at an angle? Might help if I hold the camera straight. Yeah, they wanna reach up towards those lights and I just don't have the wattage left in the grow space to put any more grow lights up in the area where I had these and there wasn't room on the side where I do have the space for it. So I figured, you know what, they're end sets. I have overwintered these on many occasions by just letting them hang out and basically dry out and turn into stumps. But the grow space has gotten way too warm for that. So that wasn't going to work. I also didn't bring out my nice clippers. These have gotten stubby, but still plenty sharp to cut through some bananas and get all this old stuff cleaned off of there. May as well remove the wonky leaves too. It's storm seasons. There's more than likely just gonna be damage to those anyways. I want these to focus on their new growth and getting them to thicken out. Yeah, that's more obvious now. That was crooked. That doesn't look right. Easy enough thing to correct. Did I just say they're plenty sharp to cut through bananas? Sometimes scissors actually work better 
with trimming bananas. It just depends on uh, how big of a caliper you're trying to cut through. You get more of a nice slicing action with a pair of scissors. I also have some neem out here with me. I can't say for certain that I'm going to need it, but there are mealybugs on the Eureka Palm right next to where these were sitting. And I've, <laughs> neighbor's dog having a good time over there. I think Turbo's gonna go join him. The mealybugs, these were sitting right next to a plant that's mealybugs on them. So I've just been checking them and just squishing them with my fingers. So I have the neem just to be safe. I think this is pretty good. Got them all cut down to about three to four leaves on each one. There's a few more on some of them. No reason to keep those dead and drying ones on there. Really, until they're dried up and brown, the plant can still be taking nutrients from them. So I shouldn't have really said that. Maybe you want to leave the brown stuff on your plants. I don't know. You do you. I didn't because of the bug situation. I was talking about the mealybugs. Dealing with that by hand for right now. I have sprays that I can use. I don't really want to because of the predator mites that are on the plants. So the insets. They're a fairly, I don't want to say cold hardy banana tree. I feel like that terminology might be misleading, right? You make sure I face this the opposite direction of the sun so that'll straighten back out. They're more cold tolerant than a lot of bananas. I usually don't see damage on mine until we hit the upper 20s for an extended period of time. Uh, they will have frost damage on them. Anytime there is frost, you get some crispiness on the foliage, but those great big pseudo stems, the trunks down in here, usually totally fine. I'll put the forecast up here on the screen. That's probably more helpful for people who are maybe wondering about when they can move things outside. My general rule of thumb is plants that are usually good in zone eight, like cold zone eight, seven B. Those are plants that I will move out when there's still some risk of frost, might have some dips into the lower thirties. Then I don't usually worry about them. And I know you wouldn't think that like the thematophyllum, the philodendron by Pinedifidum, wouldn't think about that as being a cold hardy plant, but they actually are pretty dang tough and resilient when it comes to the cold. The hope is good in zone eight. You can throw that in the ground, it'll die back to the ground in the winter time. It'll come right back for you. And these will usually do the same in zone eight as long as they're situated properly and have the right drainage and everything. Blah, 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 blah. You get it. I don't think that the cold is going to be a problem with these. With bananas in general, they don't always respond to being moved around that well. The insects, when they're this size, pretty sturdy. It's when they start to get larger, that's when there's a problem. I just don't want them to do too much growing in the grow space. I don't want them in there for another like three to five weeks and then move them outside and then plant them and have them go into some kind of shock. I would rather just go ahead and harden them off and have them ready to be outside. And if we have some extreme colds, like below 34 probably, then I'll just pull them back in. There aren't that many, it'll only take a minute. Or just lay them down and throw some frost cloth over them. Might even do that. I changed my mind about bringing the thematophyllum out here only because I was I was looking at it and I was like, well, why? It's not really going to add anything out here and it's been doing well in there. So just as much as I would love to bring more plants outside, there just doesn't really seem to be a reason to do that. I'm now at this point just talking because I don't want to clean out that fountain. It's going to be so smelly and gross. But it'll be worth it. That needs to get done. And I am I'm just oh, I'm so happy to have some plants outside. Something with some nice, bold texture and color. Big big leaves instead of, you know, all that. Want to see something gross? I'm going to show it to you anyways. Look at that. Ugh. Yeah, that's disgusting. I generally just net all the stuff out, which I did. I netted a lot of the gunk out and then I decided that it just didn't make sense to keep doing that because there's so much gunk down in there. So I started to take it apart, got the top dressing in there, put it in the bucket, some holes in the bottom so I can rinse that out. And now the fun part, which is getting this pot out of there and getting it rebalanced. There's also a light in there. There's electrical and stuff. So I'm not going to move far with it. And I'm going to dump this out and rinse it. It's going to be disgusting. Absolutely just vile. There's a pump in there. The water's circulating. So that that's helping with how disgusting it's going to be. Probably would be a lot worse if that pump wasn't there, but I don't... I don't want to do this. Right. Hopefully the next time you see the fountain, it'll be running with crystal clear water or broken. I may have broken it. We'll find out what happens next. <laughs> Never mind. It, it, I, it, uh, it's, it's not getting set up tonight. The silicone that I have in here, I put in last year to cover up a crack is, well, you see, that's not, it's not supposed to be doing that. So I have to 
reseal it and get up out of the echo. Which means it needs to dry off and it means I have to go to the hardware store and get more silicone. And you know, this is actually okay because everything over here is now wet and disgusting and smells horrible. This all would be easier to clean up when it dries out, so I'm not in a rush to handle that right now. Anyways, and I'm actually thinking about moving it. Getting the Thai, the Monstera, back here last year was a big challenge. The Thai constellation goes basically right where that blue pot's sitting. And I had to like weave it around this corner and get inside over here and getting it turned the right way. It was probably the most difficult pot that I got placed last year. And it's not that big of a plant. I mean, it's big, but weight wise, it's not too bad. So I've been thinking about doing something different right here anyways. Maybe just moving the fountain over here, possibly keep it on the patio. I think that would look weird, but maybe, I don't know. I have time to think about it since I can't set it back up right now anyways, right? And it's going to get dark soon. So I feel pretty good about the very few things I managed to get done. I wasn't even planning on starting the video today. I just remembered that I need to get this ball rolling because I have to film for next week, this week, if I can even get it done. The glider that's down here, I've talked off and on for I feel like a couple of years about moving it down over here. But I don't, why, why haven't I just done it? It's not that heavy. I'll go ahead and do that. I mean, I don't hate it. It's just, I think it's just, it's gotten old and crusty. Could definitely use a good cleaning. That's easy enough to do. And there are dyes you can use for outdoor fabric to bring those cushions back to life. I just, I don't know if I love it enough for all that. Have you ever had a piece of furniture where you really like it, but no matter where you put it, it just doesn't look right? Cause that's what I'm dealing with here. I wasn't crazy about it down there. I'm not really loving it over here only cause it constricts things, but I'm, I don't know. There are other places I can put this probably, I think. Perhaps when I start working on the tortoise area over here, that might fit nicely over there. That is if I can get it cleaned up. And also I want to take it apart too, because there are some spots around the bolts that have some rust around them. And I want to see how sturdy they're even looking because if they're looking like they're ready to fall apart, then this is all pointless because it's not going to be safe to set up. Look at that. There's actually, there's lichen growing up there on that canopy. Isn't that disgusting? I never noticed that because it was all the way down there. That's freaking filthy. This is also the backside. I accidentally put this on backwards. So that was another reason that I just hadn't seen it because it was on the back of it. Now we know. Everything that goes under the mimosa tree, fabric wise, just gets really gross. Mimosas are kind of messy trees, so I'm not shocked by this. It's cleanable, so that's not a big deal. I'm just wondering if I like this out here. If it were just two cushions, I think that would make a big difference. Just size wise and purport, I don't know. It doesn't seem right. It's comfortable and it's nice to sit on, but I don't, oh no, this is nice. Yeah, I like this. I like having this over here. So this is a good spot for this. And Toby's gonna like it too. Toby loves sitting on this thing. He might have trouble getting up on it, but I'll, I'll give him a hand. Last year, he spent a lot of time out here on these cushions. Look at that. Isn't that gross? What the heck? I shouldn't be shocked. I got this thing on clearance for like, I want to say it was maybe 60 or 75 bucks four, three or four years ago, maybe longer than that. Well, it could have been three years ago. There's no way I bought this in 2020 or no way I would have bought it and been able to get it home and set it up and everything. So probably 2019 would be my guess. It's been around for a minute and for the price, held up quite well. Very comfortable. This is so nice. I feel soothed. Okay, down to 3% battery. We'll pick up in the morning. Have a look at some tropicals that have come in the mail. Enjoy the nice weather while it lasts. It's going to get pretty stormy here and not going to be able to do a ton outside once those storms, well, we'll, we won't be doing anything outside because, you know, duh, storms. It, it, it's random, but something's happened. Storms are rolling in. It's not that windy and something happened that shouldn't have, look, look at, what, why? You know, the umbrellas I had on my old patio set were like 10 years old from Walmart. Never had any problems with them. Why do I have such bad luck with umbrellas what the hell i don't know what to do about this that's broken how, how am i even gonna wind it back up i gotta get it out of here and also the warranty better hold true on this thing this is like a 350 dollars umbrella it's not even that windy you've got to be kidding me i'm freaking ticked right now is it okay now it's starting to rain i should handle this before the rain 
actually becomes a problem. What a difference 24 hours makes. It's what, 83, 84 degrees yesterday, moving plants outside. Now it's 33 degrees outside and very chilly. The bananas are fine. Checked on them right before I came out here. They look good. Figured I'd do the rest of the video in the grow space because this time of year I tend to forget to come out here and do things with the house plants because I get so excited about being outside, but it's cold out there, so I may as well hang out in here. A few updates to give. Bird of Paradise has a new bloom on it that's hanging out, hiding all the way inside of the variegated hibiscus there. Gonna have to give that a turn so it can come on out. But let's move on to more exciting things. Forget about the broken umbrella and all of that nonsense. Got some new plants here that I ordered a while ago and it took them a minute to trickle in through the mail. It's not a lot of stuff. I think, uh, what, one, two, three, four different types of plants. This is the first one, which is gonna be very difficult to film. The camera is not going to wanna focus on those skinny stems. I bet as soon as I come up here, it's gonna wanna bore that. Hey, look at that, I was wrong. Eat my own words, didn't expect that to happen. I know, it doesn't look like much. You're probably wondering, what, what, what is this? Why would you be excited about it? This is actually a pretty cool plant. This is a Seropigia ampliata. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation on that. Ampliata has multiple names to it. Common names that is sometimes it goes by Bushman's pipe, horny wonder. It's also sometimes called the condom plant. South African native, they vine and twine, I think up to two meters, something like that. They don't branch too heavily, but they will branch out. They are mostly leafless. They have teeny tiny little bitty leaves on them. Nothing much. And those usually shut off. I want to say, around late summer, something like that, if I'm remembering correctly. Stems lay down in the ground, root at the node, produce more plants, making it pretty easy to propagate. So it's not a super uncommon plant, not always the easiest to find because, well, it's not the easiest thing to sell at a nursery when it's just looking like this. They generally need to be in flower for people to see it and take interest in them for the most part. That's starting to change now. People are starting to get more nerdy with their plants and more into things that are uncommon and unusual. The main appeal with these is of course the flowers. They have a really cool growth structure too, just being a basically a leafless bunch of core filled, filled stems, right? I and mean, that's pretty neat, but it's the flowers. They have these long tubular, really, interesting looking flowers that show up generally between late summer and early spring between november and march somewhere in there they are just like a lot of other south african succulents they're going to want a nice well-drained soil nothing's going to hold on to moisture for very long it doesn't need to be very nutrient dense and uh, they should be watered mostly during the summertime that's the rainy season from where they come from. And then to reduce that watering drastically into the fall. And uh, they can be delicate with fertilizing. So I always have to remember when I'm fertilizing that this one gets a very low strength fertilizer on it. The roots tend to crisp up and burn if you go too heavy with the fertilizers. They are a pretty easy plant to grow. Just like any other Seropegia, very prone to some pests like mealybugs. They flocked to that plant, so it was maybe not the smartest plant for me to get because y'all know I've been dealing with those mealybugs. Red spider mites, aphids, those fun things. But the redeeming quality when it comes to possible pest infestations, it's an easy one to get the pests off of. There aren't a lot of leaves, there aren't a lot of nooks and crannies for the pests to hide out in, so you really can just take them to the sink. Try not to saturate the soil if it's winter time, but just blast that stuff off of them. Not normally a problem. And the flowers, the, that's, there's so many cool things about the flowers. One, they just look neat, that white looking weird, almost amorphous, like I want to call it an amorphous blob, but it's not because it does have a shape to it, just not one that I think is safe to describe on YouTube if I want to hold on to my monetization. With those little green claws on top of it, there's a neat adaptation of this plant. They release an odor. Sometimes you can smell it. Sometimes you can't. An unpleasant smell because it's attracting flies, of course, to be the pollinators. But that draws them in, that funky smell. And the hairs make it so that it's difficult for the insects to crawl back out and uh, easier for them to move their way further down where they get covered with pollen. And then uh, with, I believe with the Ampliata, the flowers close up and then the flowers either shrivel because they've been pollinated and then the insects can get out or sometimes they'll actually just open up wider and the flies can get back out on their own. I see varying information on that. I don't know, I've never fed them the bugs before so I haven't really paid attention to that aspect of how they get back out. But it's designed so that those 
bugs are trapped inside to get covered in pollen and then they get released to go spread it around, which is pretty cool. I'm probably going to, well, for now, I'm definitely leaving it in its container, taking it easy on the watering. I've watered it once since it arrived just because that's you know proper protocol when you get a plant in the mail, but I'm not going to let it sit in any situation where it's going to, I wouldn't do this with any plant, but you know, no water underneath it where it can wick it back up, nothing like that. Lots of airflow around it. And nighttime temperatures are no longer dropping below, I'd say 55. I want to, they're somewhat tender, I would say, when it comes to cold. So when it's definitely safe to take it outside, it'll go outside and then I will repot it for you. I don't want to keep it in this thing. That's ugly. I don't want that around. And it's hard to water with this mound of soil on top, but I'm leaving that mound of soil because that's also my reminder to take it easy with the water. Because when I, I hit that with the watering can, I will know to be gentle so that I'm not washing soil over the place. It'll just get little, little drink when it's time to give it some hydration. Really cool plant, Seropegias. You can put them up onto a little trellis. They just a little unintrusive looking neat plant to have around, or you can put them in hanging baskets. I've seen people do that before. I tend to think they look kind of cool in a hanging basket because the way the flowers hang down, but you can also just get a Nepenthes for that if you wanted to. I think they move and grow better on a trellis, but you'll get more root structure and propagation in a hanging basket. Since the nodes will have to really flat onto a soil surface, those will root out and you have more you could work with if you wanted to cut it and make more of them. That would be an option. Bun plant, looking forward to watching that one grow. This next one, I can't, I can't wait to show it to you. I wish that it was in flower. It's so stinking close, but it's not quite there yet. It's a plant I've wanted for a long time. It, it got wonky. Its roots are not that developed. It wasn't in a solid like root ball for me to transplant it into the mix. So I've had some trouble keeping it staked up right, but that's okay. That's not, you can fix that. Isn't that just lovely? This is a Cerbera, also called the Thai Maroon plant or the Enchanted Incense is specifically this one. That's the Cerbera Manghas hybrid, which I, I'm not gonna go into the, all that stuff because honestly, I don't know where the hybridization of it comes from. So I'm skeptical about that naming to begin with. We'll just call it the Thai Maroon plant because that's the most common name and that'd be the easiest one to search it by. They grow very similar to a plumeria. I think they get like 20 to 30 feet tall, depending on the soil and light and well, the type that you have, that's going to make a difference as well. I don't, does any of that matter who's growing this outdoors? If you are, then it'll grow into a tree. So plant it accordingly. In the house, when it gets to a size that you think is too big, cut it in half, it'll rebranch and you'll have a smaller plant and then you can propagate all the cuttings. My understanding that the care for this is going to be fairly similar to a plumeria. I haven't grown the Cerberus before, so I'm not gonna give much care information. Otherwise, I mean, it'd just be like a book report. It's anything you could Google yourself. I do prefer if I'm talking about the care of a plant to that to come from a place of actually having grown that plant. But my understanding like I said, it's mostly that you treat it a lot like a plumeria. Bright light outdoors during the growing season and then keep it cool and more on the dry side out of the light during the winter time. That's, that's what I got for you there. Not very useful, but it's, we're, we're gonna learn about this one together. I can read you off everything I've found on Google and what other people have said about it, which to me is just a stepping stone. I prefer to do the rest from experience. So the main reason I like this plant and have wanted one of these for a very, very long time been on a waiting list from a few different places to get a hold of one of these is the flower. Not opened yet. The flowers are very variable. Sometimes they're white. This one is a white one with red striping on it. It's supposed to be one of the most beautifully fragrant plants that you can grow. Described as being more potent than combining all the jasmines and gardenias. I'm sure that's an exaggeration. But if it's even a fraction of that exaggeration, I'll be very happy. And even if not, they have really pretty flowers. I like the growth structure on them, the maroon leaves. I like the way the leaves spiral up along the stem. And when you get them at a size like this, it's easy to train them and shape them into a neat looking little tree that will eventually, I'll probably let this have a couple feet of trunk on it and then lots and lots of branches. So it'll just, it'll look really cool over the years. Not much to look at right now. I'll keep everybody updated on it when it flowers and uh, you know, let's just be a learning experience together. 
Shouldn't be a difficult one, because like I said, it's just, it's, you grow like a plumeria. So there's not much to it. Really wish those flowers were open, but they are not. Okay, and then what's left? It's an Alpinia purpurata. It's one with hot pink flowers on it. Not much to look at right now. The main stem is dying off, as they tend to do with shipping, but has a new growth coming up. Mostly purchase that because it has a good root size on it. The pink cone gingers, it's a, well, it's up here on the screen, right? You can see it. The hot pink is my preferred type, and I usually have a hard time getting a hold of that one. I can find the more pale pink, the white and the red, but that nice hot pink, I don't see that one around as often. What else? No, oh, of course, heliconias. Have a few of these heliconia hirsutas, costa flores. I just, I tend to order these every year, usually get a few of them. One of them showed up in the package upside down. So I got a bunch of stuff I got to cut off from the top. That's all right, already putting out some new growth from down below on, I believe, all of these. The Heliconias have been in here for a little over a week. This one, this one showed up looking really rough, but that's again, no surprise, they aren't the best shippers. My main thing is I wanted to get them now and give them time to uh, reroute themselves and establish themselves into a proper potting soil because those tend to come in more of a mucky, muddy soil from the place I got. Oh, everything here is from Top Tropicals. For some reason, their heliconias come in a really heavy, muddy type of blend that I, I it's not really muddy. It's just more dense than what I prefer. <laughs> I don't want them to rot. So I repotted those as soon as they came in. I figure if I order them now, then they'll have several weeks to adjust to having to have had all their roots and everything messed with and getting repotted so when they get moved outside here in a few weeks they won't look as garbagey hopefully and that's it for the new plant well there are a few other new plants but we're going to wait to talk about those till another time with a dedicated video but i did want to give a couple of updates on some other things why are you facing the wrong way well the mcdowell which got repotted not too terribly long ago just a couple weeks ago that opened up a new leaf I don't want to mess with it too much because it's still tender and I have a habit of sometimes putting holes in the new leaves on these aeroids as what you can... I guess that's not my fault though. I don't know what happened with that. I came out here one day and this thing was just laying on the ground with a giant hole in it. I assume a bird or squirrel or something got in here and knocked it over. The Gloriosum, which is right here, got repotted just a little over a week ago. It is doing very well. Both the McDowell and the Gloriosum, pretty much within just a few days of repotting them, started showing immediate progress. They were so happy to get into a fresh blend. I don't, are my arms long enough? It's about as good as it's going to get as far as getting a shot of that goes, but it's already starting to shoot up a new leaf from down in the, you can't, there it is. You see it now? That's it. Seems to be happy. The queen over here, Wauwkeanum, it has something getting ready to happen there who's to say what's going to happen with it because the last leaf it opened up was just the most sad pathetic looking leaf but maybe this will do better it already actually looks like it's going to be bigger i do already see what looks like a hole that's going to be fun hopefully it doesn't affect the new leaf that comes out if it does whatever hopefully this will put out a couple of good leaves during the summer it's a plant that I got knowing I was probably going to hate it and it might be my nemesis. Or I'll love it. I don't know. But it's not looking like it though. I need to give it some more time. It's too soon to tell. A plant that I can say has been just an absolute stud is the Vichii. This thing, it's opened up multiple leaves. It hasn't thrown a fit on the like two occasions that I went a few days too long without watering like this one does. It's just been a trooper. It's not even getting very much light over there and it's still been popping out new leaves. The Vichii, this is a winner in my opinion. If you're looking for an aeroid that gets those really big dramatic leaves, I, I shouldn't call it just yet. It's only been like three months. We'll talk about it again, maybe the end of the year, move the plants back and for the fall times. So I need to grow up more outdoors first, but it's been sturdy. I don't think anything has changed down here except that I did add a moss pole to the albo pinatum that needed to be done. I think I'm going to have to add another one. I should just probably bump that up to a full size big pole. I'll wait till I get that outside though. It has done a good amount of growing though. It's thrown out new leaves left and right. And I think that's it as far as noticeable updates, everything else. Just going to have to wait few more weeks till we get them outside. And now the bird of paradise. I need to give this a twist. I don't know if I have room to give it a twist up. You can see it has a nice looking flower that's opened up, but it's all the way inside the hibiscus bush there. It had to make, how am I gonna make more room for that? I guess I could move the pack of stackies. Really in two days, 
this plant should be fine to be outdoors, and if it's not, it was like a $5 plant, so whatever. It's been nice knowing you. Kidding, sort of-ish. That's better, much better. Made some more room for the bird of paradise. You can come in and actually get a look at the flower. It's not stuck inside the hibiscus anymore. Still has a bunch of buds on it. It has one, two, uh, three left to open, I think. I can't really see what's going on in the back there, so there could be more, but that'll be five total on this plant. So should be seeing flowers on it for several more weeks. Isn't that exciting? That makes me so happy. I love this plant. I had been debating and I talked about maybe moving this light down to give it more light. That, that, that's obvious into that statement. I decided not to because it's not giving me stretched out growth. The flowers look pretty good and solid. So I, I'm thinking it's okay. And nothing else over here is giving me stretched out growth. The croton's got flowers on it, it's hard to see. I don't think you'll be able to see them. There's flowers in there. Actually, I, since I moved the mule palms outside, I can drop that croton back down on the ground. I don't know if I'm going to though, because I have a feeling that I'm gonna get the itch and probably start moving some of the big plants outside maybe next week, which will be two weeks by the time you guys see the video. So I had to pre-film next weekend's video. So everything you see next weekend will have actually happened prior to this, but after that, things will be more current with what's going on out here. So I, I don't know, I might get the urge. I know I'll get the urge. I just need to see the extended forecast and make a decision. I don't mind moving the big plants out early because I think it's actually easier to bring them back in should we have a sudden cold snap. Moving all the little stuff in, in comparison is what I'm referring to. That, the, these plants take way longer to get moved inside than the, big ones that are out here. I mean, it's like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, probably a dozen big plants. I could have them moved back inside in 30 minutes if we have a cold snap. All the little ones over there, whole different story. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep watching the forecast as long as the lows are gonna be staying above 40 for the most part, and the croton should be fine. The hibiscus will be fine. The metanellas, I'll let them hang out for a while. If the metaphyllum, it could probably go out. Eureka palm, uh, they, yeah, it would be okay. It'd be fine. As long as the daytime temperatures are also warm. If they're not warm, then have to worry about rot. Monstera, yeah, I'll wait just because, you know, value would be hard to replace it if something were to happen to it. Other, we can talk about all that when I start doing it. I don't I didn't need to do all that rambling. That's enough. I just have to cut the video short. Can't do quite as much this week or next week's video, but things will be getting back to probably ridiculously long videos when I can start getting things done outdoors. And the, as far as the fountain's concerned, I had to order a new tube of silicone, so that just has to wait until that type of silicone that I want to use comes in the mail, the proper, there's a specific kind that I want to use, so I need to just wait for that. But yeah, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. I need to water. The water level in here got low. I need to, some of the stromancies are looking kind of dry. Spring in for you. Spring has sprung for you, getting stuff done, hopefully outside enjoying things, or just waiting for things to emerge. It's an exciting time of year. Over the next few weeks, we're gonna be getting a lot of stuff done outside and inside. Just everything's starting to happen all at once. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.